hey boss babes welcome back to my channel i hope that you guys are doing well if you don't know me my name is rowena robinson and i'm your boss babe queen i've started the boss babe series recently i have already released three episodes and this is now the fourth episode and in this episode i will be talking to you about assessment centers and how i pass my assessment center i have been going through the process and as i go through it i share it with you guys because i believe that we're all here to help each other and as i said a boss is not just a person who owns their own company a boss is somebody who is trying to make ends meet because we have to appreciate that not everyone wants to own their own business some people want to do a nine to five and that's fine because the society needs them so whether you're going to be your own boss or whether you're going to work for someone else or whether you're going to do both like me <laughs> I'm here to help and I hope this series has been really helpful so far. Please feel free to check out my other series and without further ado, I'll jump into this one. So, it is Assessment Center Day. So that means you have come to the CV, you have sent through you've been accepted for the job you possibly did an interview already whether it was a video interview telephone interview or a in-person interview and you are now at the assessment center assessment centers tend to be the final step or one of the final steps in um securing a job what i've found so far looking for a graduate scheme and stuff is that the assessment center is the very last step it is after this that you find out whether or not you're accepted into it so i'll tell you about how i secured my graduate job and how the day of the assessment center went so this graduate job i had applied for it about two months ago my first ever application where i sent through my cv was probably two months ago um i got a response back like the same day to say you know thank you for sending through your cv we'll look over it and we'll let you know after the they looked over it i then got a following um email probably a couple of days later to say you know congratulations you have now been accepted to go to the next stage of the process which is a video interview and it's a one-way video interview where i was asked four questions and i had to record the answers for the questions the only thing with this one is that the video interview it did it automatically once i press start it literally counted down gave me like one minute to read a question and come up with an answer and then when the one minute was up it went directly into recording so you had no time in between and you couldn't do any retakes right so i had messed up on one of the questions out of the four so i messed up on the second question i just did like a very moderate answer and then i went but i wasn't very confident after that one surprisingly um i must have smashed the other three questions because they came back to say actually we would um love for you to come to our assessment center I did two assessment centers for this job. We had an assessment center from the recruiter because the company that I was going to work for, they hired a recruitment company to do the back end of the um, recruitment and then the final assessment center with them. This first assessment center, it was only for the recruitment company. I didn't meet anyone from the company as yet. I only just met with the recruiters. And in that assessment center, only six candidates that were um, vying for the position. We had a group assignment and then we had a personal interview, right? One-to-one -one interview. So after that was completed, then they waited and they told us about the final stage now, which is the assessment center for the company itself. And that was the one that you had to do the most operations for because obviously you are now meeting with the managers of the company itself. And of course, that was the one that you would be most nervous for because rightly so, essentially, these are the people that you could be potentially working for and you needed to make a good impression. So this is how my assessment center went. And I hope that you can learn something from this video and implement it into your own assessment center day as well. So the day started off at 8.30. We were told beforehand that we needed to make a five minutes video and upload it to this platform they told you what you needed to say and then you're going to tell them about yourself tell them about what you want to work for the company what are your goals and aspirations and just you know like questions like those so you did the video uploaded it 
Okay, so the morning the assessment center was meant to start at half eight. It was all virtually, by the way, or online, yeah? Make sure that you log in before because if you're having any technical difficulties, you want to make sure that you solve before. And for most of the time, when it's online, they try to ensure that they give you some contact details just in case you're having a bit of problems. I logged in, I went in, and this is what you want to do. You want to be very pleasant to everybody, okay? So I went in on the day, I, people were there before me. I just, I was very polite, said good morning. I started asking people where they were coming from, what universities they studied at, what did they study, and stuff like that. And luckily for me, I actually met someone from my university who we had the same course and stuff. He was the one who actually said I went to Aston. And I, and, he, and I said, I did too. And then we got so comfortable. But it was like such an icebreaker moment because you're like, yes. Even though we didn't really roll in the same circles. When I was in my um, bachelor's last year, I I saw him in some of our lectures. But we were never friends. But it's just that relief of having someone there who's a bit relatable. That is so nice. And so he's like, oh my gosh, like this is this is amazing that you know that we could both be on this. For me on the day, as I said when I went in, I was very polite. I was asking people questions, introducing myself and breaking the ice. Because as soon as the ice is broken, then you start to relax a bit. You want to make sure that your attitude from you enter that screen till you leave is positive, right? I was also interacting with the other candidates there. It was 12 candidates and then obviously about six managers and stuff plus the recruitment people. So it was quite a lot of us on, but the recruitment people and the managers were just there observing us, right? Until they were ready to get along with the program. So you score points for being pleasant and for talking with people and for, you know, if there is someone quiet in the room, you can just include them in the conversation. Make sure that you know people's name. And it's very simple. Luckily for me, on the assessment day, everyone had their name on the screen. So I could, when the names came up, I could literally move my mouse and just click on the screen of somebody I wanted to say something to. And the name would come up, so I'd just call them. So it was Joshua. I'd say, hi, Joshua. You know, can you say this? Or, that? or if I saw that Emily was trying to speak, but then everyone was overpowering her, I was like, okay, guys, I think Emily's trying to say something. Emily, are you okay to proceed? Those things really help. Cool. All right. So then after, you know, everyone then got on, all 12 of us got on, it was now 8.30. The lady who led from the recruitment place, she came on and she was like, hello, everyone. It was nice that everyone is here early. We're very pleased that that's so we can make a start. And she then introduced the managers from the company and they came on, introduced themselves until we got into them telling us about the program. And just send us what to expect and stuff like that. And it's always good to write down some of the information because sometimes you will learn more um, than what you had researched. So you never know, some, something might come back up in the next round that you may need just from what he said. So always have a book and pen and paper with you, a book, whatever it is, and write down some of the information. Nothing's wrong with that. They quite like that, actually. They then told us that our first assessment was a group work. They split us into groups and we were given a task that we as a group needed to come up with the answers. When I entered this, I had the fear that everyone would try to be competitive. Obviously, you know that there are 12 people here and you don't know how many the company is going to choose, right? So essentially, these people are all your competitors, but you don't ever want to come in with that mindset because if you see them as competitors, you will start acting like a competitor, you start ag acting aggressively. You want them to understand that you are a team player because yes, these people are all vying for the same position, but you need to exhibit and to show that you can still be modest, like you, you should still shine through. And to be fair, I had the most amazing set of competitors so to speak because everyone on that day all 12 people 12 of us were really amazing i mean there was no competition there obviously everyone was 
trying to get their voices heard so everyone was trying to lead and stuff like that but it was never clashing it was not awkward it was not like i felt like oh my god he just shut me up and you know it was like everyone was just quite willing to go with it so we allowed we sat back and we allowed somebody to go and then when it was time for me to go they all sat back and allowed me to go and it was very much like that in the group work you want to ensure that you speak up so the company needs to see that you've done your research you're going to say something that you've researched it's not listed um in the brief but it will help the decision right because it's a group decision but you should be impactful for your group essentially you want to have a combination of being able to sit back and allow others to speak but also being able to take over and take control when you can and that should be showcased at in what you're doing what you say and stuff if you see that there's somebody who in the group who is not very vocal you can don't not in a way that you call them out but in a way that you are encouraging say to them oh what do you think about this and when they do say something you want to be encouraging you're like you know what that's a very brilliant idea and you're going to say this and say that that really helped and so overall for our group we really did well we came to a consensus it was so easy i am not gonna lie to you this was probably one of the best assessment centers that i went ever i've been to three but that one was the best so then after that was finished we sat there and we finished with um time we finished with like probably six minutes just here so instead of sitting there looking awkward of course spark up a conversation find a way to talk about the thing that you just did and then you know you can go into being a bit more social being sure that you can even in this setting be social but of course not too social that you're casual do you understand because at the end of the day you're still being watched but they still want to know that you have people person skills that you can allow your colleagues or whoever around you to feel comfortable and they like that so we were we were running jokes man we are oh, i'm telling you guys i wish i could have filmed it for you guys to let you see what i mean like no one was competitive everyone was just showcasing their best stuff and we all facilitated everyone to showcase that we allowed everyone to take over at some point and it was amazing we finished that um group work and then we were told that we have another group work they didn't put us back in the same group basically we had um, some new teammates come in, but obviously some of them were still from the group. Because as I said, it was only six of us. So surely we would have seen somebody that we already met. All right. But the person in the new group now, and we then had another assessment. And for this one, it was it was still amazing, but it was still a bit more it was a bit more competitive than the other one. Maybe because we had to choose one task that we felt was the most significant for this company and everyone had their own opinion out of four and it was six of us so everyone had their own opinion and so we had to come through with more facts and stuff it was not hostile though i will give it that much it was definitely not hostile but you could tell that there was a bit more competition there and um the dynamic was very much encouraging though everyone still was allowed to speak and stuff yeah but i am pretty sure that they sense it as well because we had four people who had come back from the previous group and two new people so coming back from the previous group now where the dynamic was easy going everyone was allowing everyone to come when these new people came in two of them they were very much um I would say much more forward, I believe, is the correct word. And they were trying to push their own answer. But we all like had to ensure that everyone got what they were saying. I I made sure that, you know, when somebody was over speaking over someone else, I was I would be the mediator. I would be like, okay guys, can we just take a breather for a moment and allow this person to speak? And allow Jessica to speak remember to always use names and, and like when jessica was speaking i'm obviously using non-verbal communication cues because they watch for that when somebody's speaking how encouraging can you be but without saying anything so you're nodding your head and you're smiling and you're being encouraging and you're like and then when the person finishes you can be like oh, that was amazing jessica i think your answer definitely held a lot of value and we can take that into consideration and stuff like that 
So that's how we did it, guys. That's how you want to be. Don't be competitive. But sometimes when you meet competition, because you may, not everyone is the same. And I was blessed enough to be in, in a room that there wasn't very much hostility and competition. But when you do meet competitors, sometimes you may have to yield to what they're saying just for the sake of moving on. Because remember that sometimes you may lose that debate, but you may win overall simply because of your attitude. What I mean is that when you're in a position where somebody's competitive and they're, they don't want you to speak and stuff, that is a bad reflection for them because no company wants anyone who does not listen. Especially in the area that we're in now where inclusion and diversity is such a major thing, people want employees who are going to be able to interact well with others and to be a team player. So in a situation like that, for example, two options were meant to be chosen you chose one other person chose another but the other person is not not hearing what you have to say you can simply be like okay um as i've said before i believe that your opinion holds merit it holds value and for the sake of this assessment day i will you know even though i believe that i have the better solution i will yield to what you say however let's do some assessment as with any decision we have to prepare for the future the good the bad and the ugly so let's let's go with your solutions just to move on but let's also you know see where we can um create mitigation methods so that you know in the future nothing comes wrong by you saying that honey you can dig at all the issues that he had but in a nice way because those outright coming and saying oh no your your idea is crap because they said no 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 you gotta put it nicely so you're going to say, okay, we'll go with your way, but let's create, you know, mitigation methods in case of the future, risk assessment. And then you pick out everything that you found was, was wrong. So you said, okay, so if we go your method, da -da 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 -da, and you put a solution to it, da -da 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 -da, and they will see that whilst you backed out and you had valid points and whatever, you were able to take somebody's idea and realistically turn it into your own because you have gone and taken all the things that were wrong with his thing and turn it in such a way that he never felt offended, but that just shows that you are able to communicate and have a really well people person skill. So that is amazing on you and that would be good for you. And then obviously that's bad for the other person because one, they didn't listen to you. And two, their solution was not even the best one. So you still win, honey. All right. Then after that, you have your one-to-one -one interview. For this assessment center, we were allowed to meet some of the graduates who were already on a program, which was so amazing because you didn't get to ask them questions like, yo, what do I expect? Like, what are, what are the working hours? Um, is it really as good as they say? Like, what is it? And they will let you know, like, yeah, nay, whatever. But they, on this one, no one's assessing you. But you still want to make sure that you remain professional. Because, of course, you never know. Behind your back, when you finish this, they might go back to report wh who asked what. So make sure that you're um, memorable. Make sure that you ask questions. Not overbearing, but memorable. For me, I was the first one who went into that room. As I said, it was virtually, so we had to click onto a room. I was the first one who was speaking to the graduates and stuff. They remembered my name quite well and stuff like that. Then everyone else started coming in and we had lost our little one-to-one -one moment. Then we had our one-to-one -one interviews and this is where you just make sure that all the research that you've done, all the experience that you've done, any skills that are relevant to this position gets asked. You want to make sure that you it's okay to tell them that, okay, let me think about this answer before you just jump into it. I did that. Um, I would not say that it was my best interview moment simply because I stuttered. I don't like stuttering. When I'm answering a question, I want to answer it firm and strong and move. I don't like, I don't like stuttering. I hate it. So for me, that kind of dampened my esteem a bit when I started on the first question and I apologized and I said to the guy, I'm like, I'm sorry, it was two of them. And I said to them both that, yeah, I'm sorry, let me just start over. And he's like, okay, no worries. Like, you can take your time. You know, you don't have to rush and stuff. And that's because he was so encouraging. I felt way more motivated to gather my thoughts and say what I needed to say. And that really helped. Oh, my gosh. And then it's just being nice as well, smiling and answering the questions and trying to 
put in a little joke so they can smile because that breaks ice. An interview is never a comfortable space. It's not in your comfort zone. No matter how good you are, it's never in your comfort zone. You never know what they're going to ask you. So you have to be prepared. And sometimes it needs to take a minute for you to come up with an answer and say it well. And your presentation matters because you can have the best answer, but if you present it poorly, then that reflects, right? So you want to present it well. So they were very encouraging and I gathered and I mustered back my confidence and I went ahead and I answered the question and I was pleased with it. And that was it. That was it for my assessment center. After I completed it, like I just felt like, hmm, I want to work here. I was looking at places to rent at this, where the, the location was and all that. And I just thought, and I just thought, what are you doing? Like what? Honey, you ain't got the job yet. Why are you looking like, why are you out here looking for places to rent as if literally two hours later, I got a call from the recruitment people to say that the company has reached a decision. The company has actually called me to say that they would be honored to have you working with them. And they want to send you a contract right now. Um, so if you would be willing to get it. And I'm like, if I'll be willing to get it, mate. You think I just went through that for fun? What do you mean if I really went through Of course, send it through. As I said, these people are just really nice. They really, I am so blessed to have met such amazing people. They understand. They call you beforehand and they help. Like they tell you what to expect and stuff. Not everyone will have that. So I am making this video so that who doesn't have it will be able to have it. But guys, that was my assessment day. That's how I smashed my assessment center. You want to be nice. Make sure that you research. Make sure that you come with the notes. Make sure that you are not competitive, but make sure that you stand out. Okay, address people by their names. And take a minute to breathe. It's okay to not answer the question straight away. It's okay to say, can I have a minute to think about this? Yes. And make sure that you either come with questions or some good questions, that is or you don't come with any at all right so when i finished my um interview the guy had asked me if i wanted to ask question and i said yes because as much as this is for them to know me this is also for you to know them so ask all the questions that you want to ask no question is you know dumb actually let me take that back there's some question that you you shouldn't ask there's some questions that are so obvious that if you, at this point, if you don't know it, may and you ask, that's a bad reflection. One of them is, oh, what, what is this job for again? What does this position do? If at this stage you don't know that, you're not fit here. So don't ever ask that. But you want to ask questions as if you were already planning on working there. So I said to them, has there ever been like an, a graduate that you've took on that then didn't um fulfill their role i didn't do it well how did you deal with that because that's that is one of the things that i worry about you know i'm like jesus what if i go here and i am not able to fulfill the role i'm not able to meet the demands what happens then but then they reassure that no like obviously unless it's your personal thing where you genuinely don't want to work here then we work with you you know you have People who are there to guide you and your managers and stuff like that. You shut at them and whatever. So it was really nice. That's how I secured my graduate scheme two hours after I finished my assessment center. I hope this helps you guys on um, what to expect, how to behave. And thanks for watching. Please make sure that you binge watch all my videos. I've created a playlist called Binge Watch. Please press play. And let it play out in the background, alright? I need them watch hours. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in another episode. Bye.